Let's talk about um, more recently what you have been able to get out. I want to work backwards. William McNeely, explain who he is and what he has to say. William McNeely is a submariner uh, for the UK Trident fleet. Uh, Trident is the UK's nuclear weapon system. All its nuclear weapons are in four submarines uh, called Trident. It's a very expensive program, been going uh, for more than 30 years, which is a matter of significant debate now uh, in the United Kingdom uh, because it has been stationed in Scotland. And if you look at this from the Scottish perspective, uh, England put all its nukes and nuclear processing in Scotland, in Fastlane, um, making it a nuclear target, uh, but also making it a, a you know, potential place of a, nu a nuclear spill or nuclear accident. And so with the rise of the Scottish independence movement has come uh, a formal statement by the Scottish government, the Scottish National Party, um, that they want those weapons out and that if they get independence, um, they will uh, take them out. And so William McNeely um, uh, revealed to us um, a, a long analysis of uh, accidents and um, other dangerous activities that had happened um, in those in the Trident a nuclear weapons system program and some extracts uh, from the nuclear weapons safety book. And um, he went, uh, he learned quite a lot from the uh, Bradley Manning, uh, Chelsea Manning now, uh, and Edward Snowden situations. You can see that quite clearly. Um, and he, uh, um, yeah, he learned quite a lot from that. and. He was successful in bringing this issue into public debate. Although that said, the US, uh, the UK media was very conspicuously silent. Uh, we suspect that there is a um, standing denotice um, on all Trident nuclear weapons issues. That would not be unusual. The denotice system here is a defense advisory notice. The editors of the major newspapers uh, meet once a month. Um, uh, in a closed session uh, with the government, which says what, what things it doesn't want to appear as far as uh, military intelligence is concerned. Uh, anyway, eventually that was broken after we published and some of the Scottish newspapers also uh, picked up uh, aggressively on the issue. So, I mean, here you have this trident whistleblower who actually has just turned himself in. Um, he, in an odd way like you now, uh, in captivity, um, puts out this extended statement trying to explain his concern uh, about the lax security around the Trident missile system, how easy it is to get into the heart of, into the belly of the beast, saying it's harder to get into a bar than to lay a duffel bag that no one has yeah. ever checked the insides of next to a nuclear submarine or well, a nuclear in missile. A, in a nuclear submarine next to a nuclear missile. Yeah. So explain some of the things that um, he has documented here that WikiLeaks put out. Well, he's documented um, fires uh, on nuclear submarines, uh, <clears throat> that the uh, so many false positives in the alarm systems you know, the, where there's a fault or a problem in the submarine, that um, people just started turning the volume off on them uh, because, you know, they're too irritating. A gradual uh, collapse uh, in, the, in the maintenance standards. In some ways, these are all things um, that you would expect. For example, he gives another example of security, that it's harder to get through airport security than it is to get onto a Trident nuclear weapons submarine. And he said rarely was his ID checked. Yes. Almost never. And uh, another Trident submariner came out and said that as well, backed him up um, after this revelation uh, on exactly that point. And that is actually not surprising um, if you know, how, if you've studied institutions and how they work. For example, in a nightclub, you have people trying to sneak in all the time uh, and you know, clearly succeeding. And as a result, that disciplines the security staff. If they start slacking off, 
then they very quickly they pay the consequences. Um, similarly with airport, there's a passengers trying to get through all the time. And um, now for something like a Trident system, um, you have 30 years uh, with if anyone's getting in, it's perhaps Russian or Chinese spies, uh, historically, uh, and they keep it all quiet. So there's no disciplining effect um, when it goes wrong. And so gradually the standards all start to decline and people engage in a kind of pantomime uh, for the higher ups, but everyone understands that we don't bother to do this because it's too much work. We're here with Julian Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy, where he's lived, uh, taken refuge, has had political asylum for almost three years. And now we're talking about William McNeely, the man known as the Trident whistleblower, who has just turned himself in after releasing, releasing remarkable documents about his observations um, getting uh, to the actual nuclear missiles with hardly ID let alone um, anyone checking, for example, big duffel bags, who knows what would be in them. So why did McNeely turn himself in? Well, there's two potential actions against McNeely. Uh, one is a political action for his revelations. Now, uh, the UK military, um, the Royal Navy, is very concerned about the politics. We have these missiles all based in Scotland, um, the uh, recent election showed that the Scottish National Party was completely dominant. It won 57 out of 60 seats in the election, and it says it's going to remove Trident. Uh, that is its policy. And if as soon as it becomes independent, it will do that. As soon as Scotland becomes an independent nation, which they're pushing for, they will do that. Um, so the, the politics of this moment are acute and the UK military doesn't want to pour more fuel onto the political fire. It's trying to do everything to dampen out um, discussion of this material. Now, the other attack on him is that he was... He's an Irish seaman, right? Irish. He's from Northern Ireland. Uh, the other attack on him is that he went AWOL uh, during this whistleblowing period, clearly learning from Edward Snowden's playbook, um, stepped back, release material, try and manage the situation in terms of media and so on, and then once you see how it's going, maybe step back into the fold. Um, so every day he was away, he was technically committing another crime uh, in military law of being away without leave. So the, the UK military have now said, we'll see whether they stick to this, their promises can't be relied on, but that they're not going to prosecute him under the Official Secrets Act. Um, they're going to go for him uh, under AWOL. And I imagine if they're trying to uh, suppress debate about this matter, uh, they will prosecute him for being away without leave. They'll perhaps put him in prison for 28 days and they'll give him a dishonourable discharge as a way to kind of dampen the conflict. If it comes to court about the material that he's been released, well, they'll have to say, yet yeah, it's true. This is true, and it was unlawful for him to release this true information. And he will say, well, but um, there was a public interest in this. And then they'll say, well, you don't have a right to argue public interest and so on. Uh, so at the moment, it appears that the UK government is heading down this direction of trying to not have a big high profile court case, uh, which would probably be held uh, in Scotland and further inflame the Scottish independence movement. So I just want to read uh, from his observations. This contains references, he writes, to CB 8890, the instructions for the safety and security of the Trident II D5 strategic weapon system. I'm sure all the strategic weapon system SWS personnel are scratching their heads and wondering how I'm writing this on my personnel to laptop, I think means personal laptop, and referencing a book which is contained within a safe in the Missile Control Center, MCC. The MCC is the compartment used to control the launch of the nuclear missiles. It can only be accessed by people on the access list, and no personnel electronics are allowed. I was on the access list, but how could I have gotten a copy of every single chapter onto my phone? A hidden camera? No. Smuggled the book out, then filmed it? No. 
What I did was walk into a room where no recording devices are allowed. I sat down, took my Samsung Galaxy um, S2 White out of my pocket and recorded the entire book word for word. I held the phone still about a foot in front of my face and anyone who looked at the screen or used common sense would have seen I was recording. There were other SWS personnel in the room. In the video, you can see an SWS junior about three feet in front of me or an SWS JR about three feet in front of me, talking to another SWS junior sitting right beside me. You probably think that's impossible, but I've got the evidence to prove it. The complete lack of concern for security worries me. The fact is, it would have been even easier for me to cause a nuclear catastrophe than to gather that information. And gathering that information was actually quite simple, due to the amount of ignorance, he writes. These are the words of William McNeely, he says he filmed this top secret book with his Samsung, which is white, out in front of yes. other people in a room where he wasn't even supposed to have a personal device. And gives quotes from it in the material uh, that we released. Yeah. So this is a tremendous embarrassment, to say the least, to the British it, military. It, it is. Uh, it's, uh, inter but it's very interesting to see the way it's playing out uh, in the UK press, you know, with a, uh, it seems like an initial ban. Uh, on reporting uh, any of the information. Has a deal been made between journalists and, or is well, there a kind of actual official the, ban? The UK society is a, uh, often an informal society. It, uh, in London, things work behind the scenes. Um, and, but there is a formal mechanism as well, which is the D-Notice advisory system, where the military and intelligence agencies uh, once a month meet with the editors of the UK and they say what things that are not to be reported uh, and then there's a gentleman's agreement uh, that these things are not reported. It's a sort of the media self-regulates uh, because there's a fear uh, of regulation if they don't do what they're told. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange speaking inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he's taken refuge for the past three years. We'll be back in a minute with another explosive revelation.